Hello everybody, welcome back to another command tutorial. This one is going to be a little bit less rigorous than some of the other ones, because the commands are a bit complicated, and it's sort of a niche thing. So I'll, I'll be explaining myself a little bit, but uh, not as much detail as, as perhaps sometimes. So this command is pretty simple in concept. <laughs> the idea is that you have a, a splash block, and uh, in this case it's TNT. But you can do this with any following block. I got a comment on my Summon Splash Potions video that was questioning how to make a uh, larger TNT block, and uh, it was an interesting project, so I thought I'd share. So the way this is done is I have a command here, and I've got a nicer viewing of these commands I'll bring up in just a second. But the idea is that you have a, a Splash Potion that you summon, and it's got a, a falling block riding it, and then when the Splash Potion hits the ground, the falling block whose timer has been reset by this, uh, is no longer having its timer reset, and so it disappears. So it's it's a, a fairly fairly simple concept there. It's just that the, the selectors are a little bit weird. So let's get on to the commands themselves. This is an expanded version of the rather ugly command that is put into the, uh, the command block that summons the potion, the one that you click the button of. And both these commands will be in the description, don't worry. This is a summon command, so the first thing we do is say summon, as uh, you might expect. And we are still summoning a potion, and it's a little offset so that you can see it fall better. So the way I'm differentiating between normal potions and the potions that ought to have their TNT blocks updated um, is by naming the potion itself. So I've set a custom name here, and then I've set the name to not be visible, so it doesn't get in the way of the uh, fancy TNT block. In the item tag, which is what specifies all the attributes of the potion entity, uh, it's like the item that the potion entity was formed from. We have the ID of a stone button, and that's so that it's small and you don't see it through the, the big TNT block around it. And count one, necessary for it to show up, <laughs> doesn't do a lot. Tag has the custom potion effects that you're likely interested in, as well as the custom potion color. That's the color of those particles that explode when the potion hits the ground. The custom potion effects, of course, are uh, explained numerous times in the other videos that I'll link to in the description if you need more help with them. But it just has an ID, a duration, an amplifier, and whether or not the particles are uh, to be shown when affecting a player. Now the fancy part comes after the item tag. This is the passengers tag. And I just realized that I should put a little I should put a little comma there instead of on the next line. Anyway, the passengers tag contains a list of entities that are riding the entity or spawning, in this case the potion. And each of those is an item, a, a, a tag of its own, which has entity tags in it, like the ID of the entity, in this case a falling block, and information of the entity beyond just its ID. And in this case, I've used block state to specify Minecraft TNT for the uh, name of the block that the falling block is formed from. And in this case, I'm also setting the time of the falling block to negative one. So falling blocks are a little bit weird in how they behave. If you try and summon one yourself, it's not going to work out very well because its default time is zero. When that time increments to one, it increments every tick. When it increments to one, it will probably disappear because a falling block will disappear when its time increments from zero to one if the block at the location of the falling block itself doesn't match the falling block. If it does match, then the block in the world is destroyed rather than the falling block. This is a system that allows for the block to replace the block in the world depending on where it's summoned, or not create more of that block. So the general idea is to reduce glitches of duplication and uh, replace the block that it ought to have come from. So in this case, I use the time by setting it to negative one every tick, and that's what this function does. I'll get to that in just a moment. But it sets the time to negative one every tick, um, and then when the potion disappears, the time no longer is reset, and it increments, and the block disappears. So that's why the uh, the block over here disappears when it hits the ground. It's no longer being reset, and so it checks and finds bad stuff. It doesn't uh, spawn the TNT on the ground. So let's go back to the uh, notepad, and go over to this function. This is the function that does the resetting, and it's executed every tick. We're using an execute command at the potion entity, which, remember, we have specified to have a custom name, Lisa. <laughs> and we're running data merge entity. This will 
merge the time equal to negative one onto the following block that is specified in this entity selector. So the idea is that every tick we merge time equal to negative one to any falling block within one block of the potion custom name Lisa with a limit of one, because the data command requires a limit of one. And that every tick resets the timer that we so desperately need to reset. And as I've showed already, <laughs> culminates in that. So that's how you can summon splash blocks. And if you want to customize this stuff, the ID is yours to tweak however your heart may desire. You can, oh, not that ID though, this ID. <laughs> so you can set the block state from TNT to something like a stone or stone button indeed, as Notepad so helpfully corrected. And then beyond just the block, of course, you can set the custom potion effects and color, all that good stuff. You can also change this. I wouldn't really recommend it because the stone button is nice and hidden. <laughs> it's a, a small thing and it almost hides inside the, the model of the falling block. So change it if you want, but uh, I like the stone button. I think it works nicely. You might find something better. If you do, feel free to comment it. That though is going to be that. And hopefully you enjoyed this episode. Hopefully it was useful. And I will see you in the next one. Take care and bye-bye.